and this is a cheap platinum jubilee trifle go try it at home let me know how it goes Let's make the Jubilee trifle. Right, before we start, cheers. Oh, I can't believe you. So, before we start, really, today's video is about making or assembling the jubilee trifle now we've all seen it on the news we've seen it on social media we've seen it on bbc food recipe blah 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 but there's something about it so i love trifle it's one of those things that i don't make enough and we don't have it ever since i mean the last time i've had trifle was in primary school or secondary school when they had it at the canteen and my grandparents used to make it for us now there's something about the trifle it's quite it's a peculiar dessert because it's quite it takes a lot of ingredients to assemble but when you get it right it's really delicious and um, there's something about the Jubilee trifle which I find really difficult to get my head around I don't know about you guys and I know a lot of people have who have made it have had their own like thoughts about it and it is a really really pretty trifle now I'll blink up a picture here this year's Jubilee the chosen dessert for the jubilee is the lemon swiss roll and amaretti trifle it looks delicious and i kind of am envious of whoever makes it however i want to try to make it today but the cheap version of course if you don't know what this week is about it's to celebrate the queen's jubilee um, i think it's the platinum jubilee actually and we're going to be celebrating it with a couple of holidays number of barbecues cakes teas scones and a whole lot of other treats but i just want to say something so when this dessert won um and it was the sort of the epitome of the J platinum jubilee i thought what a wonderful dessert that replicates sort of the time the kind of treat and how luxurious it is right so when i was looking through the recipe and i was thinking oh this is quite simple to make but is it though because just looking at the ingredients alone and I'll, blank, I'll probably bring a little screenshot of the print ingredients. There is so many ingredients to it. There's so many stuff to do. And who has the time? If you imagine how busy you'll be over the weekend, trying to enjoy yourself, enjoy your barbecue, your drinks, you're not gonna have time to be able to assemble such a luxurious dessert. Now, I'm thinking, most of these ingredients you have at home, which makes it easier, but it must be truly expensive to make this dessert. So I can imagine it kind of comes up to a quite hefty cost. Now, yes, I did take the pleasure of doing the maths because of course I did. Um, but I really wanted to know like ha genuinely how much it would cost to make such a dessert. And uh, my maths here is obviously proof in the pudding. But that's something I realized is that obviously not everyone will have you know, orange peels in their cupboards, or you know, like arrowroot or amaretto, unless you actually like the alcoholic beverage, um, or just tins of ma uh, mandarins, or you know, just things that you would not really have. And so, there's a lot of ingredients that you would need to buy ahead of time to make the dessert, but also ingredients you probably already have. So it it could come up to the cost that I'm going to state now, but. If you didn't have any ingredients and you started from fresh and especially in the number of ingredients you need it can come up to quite a lot i've tallied it up to about 45 pounds and 50 pence that's 50 pounds for a trifle i mean that's crazy so i was thinking today instead of doing it from scratch and from start what it would cost if it was doing it from store-bought goods and basically this is a cheat trifle um it is the cheat platinum jubilee trifle and it makes it so much easier for everyone to do it at home i think it's easier i think it's more accessible but you let me know down below also by the way there's a lot of the there's a lot of the recipes that i couldn't buy the replacement of um either because they didn't have it in the store or because 
it's something that you have to specifically make rather than something you like you can just buy so obviously there's a lot of things that you can replace and chop and change but i don't think it's illegal to chop and change it but i do think it would be aesthetically pleasing if we put it made it to the closest thing of the jubilee trifle it'll be really amazing so let's start off with everything that we need for today cheat platinum jubilee trifle also i just want to mention something right so some of these ingredients you guys probably or some of us are really familiar with it as a childhood and in fact i haven't had or touched any of these ingredients for such a long time but anyway so let's start with the swiss roll i've cheated obviously and I've got a strawberry and raspberry Swiss roll. I know it's meant to be a lemon Swiss roll, so I thought about that and I thought, why not spread some lemon curd on top of it so it still replicates what it is, but just an added strawberry and vanilla. You may not like these versions, obviously you can get pricier versions. I went to Sainsbury's, so I, that's a local supermarket to me, but of course you can go to Waitrose and to Marks and Spencer's or any other supermarkets that suits you. I just thought the local ones, the best quality I could get were these. The next one is St. Clement's Jelly. Now I had a thought about this, right? I could make jelly off from scratch. Really straightforward. I just needed like gelatin, some um, fruit extracts, some um, either unwaxed lemons or oranges and caster sugar. Really simple, um, straightforward recipe. In fact, I was too lazy. So I decided to use the Hartley's orange jelly, like pre-made orange flavor jelly. So this is something that you can set well ahead of time, you just use hot water and you put it in the fridge and it will set for you. Actually quite delicious. Um, very low calorie, which is to my surprise. This is something that I had as a child when I was really young and we used to come home in the summer. My grandparents would have this in the fridge with a bit of squirty cream, divine. Um, of course you can't go with without custard in a trifle that's literally like the most important ingredients in my opinion so i went with the ambrosia devon custard yeah devon custard classic tastes delicious really cheap <laughs> the recipe said make amaretti the amaretti biscuits i've got the soft amaretti biscuits um taste the difference one i couldn't be bothered to make it i couldn't find alma flour so and also this is a cheese a cheese recipe so i bought a box of amaretti biscuits and then for the coolie now the coolie i found really interesting actually because there was a mango and passion fruit coolie available on sainsbury's online shopping but i couldn't find it in the supermarket so i bet some of you guys are already using the mango passion fruit coolie for your own dessert which i'm really proud of but instead i've kind of replaced it instead of a mandarin chunky coolie i didn't want to splash out on four tins they were all about a pound 70 each in sainsbury's and that's a huge cost if you're trying to make a, a huge amount of this trifle so the replacement is this this is the kesar mango pulp um, quite common in Asian cuisines. We use it quite a lot for like salo mango coconut desserts. Extremely, extremely delicious. But the actual pulp of it is actually thick enough to become a coolie. And I'm not going to do anything other than actually just layer it into the dessert because I think it's delicious enough. But it's a really good replacement for the mandarin coolie. And that's my defense today. <laughs> now, finally something i will be making i know everything has been a cheat already but something i will be making is the white chocolate bark which we've got a bit of white chocolate we're gonna melt that down and add some stem ginger and then maybe some sugar or something like that just to crystallize it and make it look really pretty now you will find that on the recipe you can use mixed peel i had a little bit of a dilemma when i went to sainsbury's all the mixed peels were out of date and I didn't want to use it because I didn't want to ruin the recipe. So I stuck with something I already have at home, which is the stem ginger in a sugar mixture. I'm gonna dice this up light and, um, lightly and then we'll use it for the white chocolate bark. Duh. <laughs> the whipped cream for just, you know, the central part of a trifle, whipped cream. Of course, you can like replace any of the ingredients to whatever you prefer. And if you're allergic or you don't like something, you can either swap it out and make it of your own. There is no rule to this. I just thought I'd try and stick closely to the Jubilee trifle recipe as much as possible. Do you want to change it too much? So 
The cost for today making the uh, Platinum Jubilee trifle actually amounted to £10.65. That's a quarter and a fraction of what it would normally cost if I were to get the ingredients completely, all the ingredients from fresh um, at the supermarket. And that's such a shame because £10.65 or £45, I mean, if I had the money and deeper pockets, I would do splash out 50 pounds to buy all the ingredients so much cheaper to do it this way and i'm pretty sure it's equally as delicious maybe not as delicious as making it with luxurious ingredients but i'm happy to do it this way because i thought it'd be really interesting to try it um so let's get on let the construction begin let's go start with making the jelly as per instructions on the label um i took away about 100 ml of water away from it just so that it's a stiffer jelly than um, necessary put the jelly to one side let it cool off um until i i put it in the fridge for an hour or so just so that it starts to set on the edges depending on how cold your fridge is it might not set that quickly but it, this process is going to take a long while because it will need to set with the Swiss roll at the base. Um, I had a problem with my Swiss roll. It actually floated a little bit, which is actually really cute. Don't know why. But anyway, so once the jelly mixture is done, now slice your Swiss roll into thin slices. Now, it depends on how much you need. Um, the thicker the slices are, tend to be useful to have for smaller portions. So I would go for like a centimetre. I went for just under a centimetre just because I had to use a bigger bowl. I made a little mistake at the beginning for using a two of a small bowl and now I've changed it to a bigger bowl but anyway point is once that's done now I to circumvent around not having a lemon swiss roll I put the lemon curd as a spread over on top of the slices so that it still has that residual lemon curd taste without losing it too much which was actually quite delicious and the Swiss roll, as per my memory, is still quite dry, so I'm quite grateful for the um, jelly to be set on top of it. Now, the one mistake I have made is I haven't made enough jelly, but I'm not really too big of a fan of that, and my bowl might have been too wide, but anyway, it's there, it sets, and once the, the jelly sets on top of the um, Swiss roll in the fridge, then we can layer it up. Next, prepare the white chocolate bark. This can go wrong a little bit because the stem ginger obviously sat in a liquid a syrup before so what i did is wash it and then dry it with a paper towel leave it to one side so it kind of air dries a little bit then i sliced it up so that it's nice little like rough shapes of like gem and the whole point is, of it is that it's meant to be like a gem white chocolate bark which is actually really fun to make and it's super pretty when it sets i rolled the dice just stem ginger in some caster sugar white caster sugar just to create a bit of extra sparkle and it's absolutely gorgeous and then with the white chocolate i didn't do it over a double boil i just put it in the microwave lightly warming up the bowl and the chocolate at the same time and in fact i think it only took a burst of two 30 seconds to actually do this and by this point i actually um realized that the bowl was warm enough to actually melt the white chocolate on its own so i actually didn't add more heat or more time to the microwave and once i got into a really nice shiny tempered white chocolate then i started to spread it onto a baking sheet on a tray which will sit in the fridge and i spread it really thinly on the baking tray so that it kind of cools evenly how you know when the chocolate bark is ready is when the glossy chocolate turns into a matte white that's when you know like the chocolate is perfect to break so just before you set it into the fridge make sure you add the stem ginger that you've coated it in sugar and that would be the final thing you need to do with that let that set aside that and the swiss roll and jelly will sit in the fridge for at least three or four hours just because it just takes that long to like set properly and then you can sit back have a drink have a pims on me and enjoy until you have to really do the next step now the next step is pretty simple it is the layering part but there's one more ingredient that you actually have to do a bit more labor to it's the cream now with the cream i'm going to whip the cream with some lemon curd just because i know how delicious that's going to be and i just want to add a bit more citrusy ingredients into the whole thing i know that we didn't have the mandarin coolie but we have the mango puree this time so there's less citric than there's more sweet and by god this is a very sweet dessert so you only need a little bit i'm gonna whip 500 ml 
of double cream with two tablespoons of lemon curd. You can obviously go a little bit more heavier depending on how sweet you want it. I think two tablespoons is fairly enough, especially for a sweetness point. And then we'll start layering, which is really fun for everyone. Get everyone involved. Now, layering. You've already layered the Swiss roll with the jelly, and that should be set in the fridge. The next part is the custard. They are a thick layer of custard on top, and then you're gonna crumble over the amaretti biscuit a, a nice layer go be generous with it but obviously save some for the actual topping the next part of it is the cream your lemon curd cream which actually is so delicious and so easy to make um and actually quite addictive i love lemon curd so maybe that's a guilty pleasure there layer the cream on top of the amaretti biscuit and the custard um, go make it sure it's really even and you're almost at the final step now you just layer on the amaretti biscuit the final layer of it and then add your chocolate bark and there you have it the platinum and jubilee trifle it looks divine it's sugar overload and it's so delicious let's round this up so there you go guys it's huge it's massive let me just turn it around to show you the jewel chocolate bark it is pretty it's pretty huge really street you can tell i've had a little bit of a corner of it i'm not gonna lie it's not my most sensible dessert to make especially on a summer heat but it is quite delicious but it's super labor and love intensive you need to be able to do every part every component of it all and obviously this is mine so i can do whatever i want but grab a little bit of everything Mm. It works. You can't deny it. It's a very. Mm. That works too. It's super delicious. Super indulgent. Would I ever make it again? No. Even when I cheated, it's still a lot of work because it's, it takes so much time. Like, if you read on the BBC website, I think it says it takes three and a half hours. Honestly, it's lying to you. It doesn't take that. If it was that quick, I don't think I'd be complaining. It's been taking like the whole day to make sure that everything's set so you don't ruin it because I don't want to do this again, right? Like, it takes a lot of work already. It is a very beautiful dessert. Credits to the person who designed and created this. Credits to like people who actually made it from fresh. So much respect from everyone who's made this dessert from fresh. Even I wouldn't even uptake that um, task. It's so, 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 so complicated. You have to have really good time management and you have to get loads of storage because the bark has to set, the jelly has to set, so does the coolie. Well, in my case, I use mango puree, which is actually really delicious in it. The um, Swiss roll has to set too. It can't be too warm otherwise it will melt the jelly. So, so many components that makes it a really tricky but yet fabulous dessert. Um, if you've come this far, please comment, um, please comment the ice cream bowl or the trifle bowl. I'm thankful for you guys watching this. And this is a cheap platinum jubilee trifle. Go try it at home. Let me know how it goes. It was absolutely delicious. I am so tired right now. I would not do it again. As always, like, comment and subscribe. Click on the bell, let me know how it is. Let me know if you try it as well. Leave it in the comments down below whether you actually like this. I know there's a lot of people who are um, either disappointed because it's not vegan, highly, highly uses huge amount of milk. So obviously it's not vegan. It's very labor intensive. So I appreciate that like, those who have made it know how labor intensive it is. I can't even like take any credit for it. Anyway, I'm gonna love and leave you. Take care. I've never had amaretti biscuits before. They smell like amaretti, which makes sense. Oh, they're really soft. Hmm. Tastes like marzipan. It's gritty. I'm not sure if I like it. Hmm.